health officials also say these types of positives are common. There are simple things you can do to stay safe from mosquito-borne illness. We always recommend um, mosquito spray, wearing long sleeve shirts, uh, you know, just something so that mosquito can't bite you, you know, through the skin. Um, obviously, the best way to prevent mosquitoes is, is um, reduce or remove any kind of a mosquito breeding area to anywhere that stand in water. The most at-risk groups are seniors and children or those with weakened immune systems. Health experts also point out that fewer than 1% of people infected with West Nile virus develop a serious neurological illness. This morning, a local woman is urging you to take precautions after her husband of 30 years died from the West Nile virus. Duranda Hops says her husband, Gary, died June 29th at his home in Springtown, that's in Parker County, but just three weeks earlier, he was fine, working in the yard, mowing the lawn. She says it was the last thing he did before his health started to decline. And then he went to work on Wednesday morning, and about an, about an hour in, he said, I have to go home. I'm not feeling well. Now, after he was admitted to the hospital, she says he was unrecognizable in just a matter of weeks. And he could be the first person to die of West Nile virus this year in Texas, as we are waiting for the state to confirm that. Experts do recommend using bug spray, getting rid of standing water, and avoiding time outdoors around dusk and dawn to avoid those mosquitoes. Uh, locally acquiring uh, dengue. First of all, if you've noticed, it's kind of cold here. Mm -hmm. um, so mosquitoes don't like that. But I think I want to say to those of you, not, this is big vacation time. And those individuals who are going to like areas in the Caribbean or Puerto Rico was seeing a rise. And some of those areas, I would pay attention to uh, the alerts that the CDC and World Health Organization puts out. Be careful. Okay. Now, how should you protect yourself? Should you bring wipes, wipe things down, wear bug spray? I mean, what's your top recommendation? Well, my top recommendation is bring a in, bring an insect repellent that's been approved by the Environmental Protection Agency. And I always tell everybody, one that has DEET. Shalom. First off, I want to start off by saying all praises, honor, and glories due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. By Hashem Rekakadosh, all praises to who calls God, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. By Hashem, meaning in the name, Yahweh Shai, being the name of the only be on the Son. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the whole lake. Preaching this word in truth and sincerity on the Brother Taza by the Great Millstone, Arizona camp. Laura Will with another video to edify. And uh, as you see, there's an article on the screen. It says Colorado governor declares disaster emergency following the state out is following the latest uh, bird flu outbreak, right? And the, the first piece of news I showed was how West Nile virus and dengue fever is on the rise. And now you have bird flu outbreak, right? It says Colorado, Colorado Governor Jared Polis declared a disaster. Look, it's lucky until last year, emergency following the latest avian flu outbreak at a commercial egg facility in uh, Weld County. On, on Monday, samples submitted uh, from the producer tested positive for a highly uh, pathogenic avian influenza. Um, officials said 1.78 million chickens will have to be killed as a result All right so the Lord is touching this place everywhere all at once man All right. let me get this man this is uh, 2nd Ezra 15 and 11 it says and I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and I will smite Egypt with plagues as before and I will destroy all the land thereof and when you go back to Egypt Egypt was plagued with, with, with flies, and there's several different kinds of flies. You have biting flies, you have bot flies, right? The Lord could have brought them all at one time. The Lord plagued Egypt with locusts, right? Frogs, all that. So the Lord was hitting Egypt with everything. Throwing a book at him. Not only that, but the Lord ended up plague in Egypt's, uh, the Egyptians' uh, cattle, while Israel's flocks were, were fine. It says, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the, with the plague and punishment that the Most High should bring upon him, upon him. And that's what's happening. America's starting to hit, being hit with the plague and punishment of the Lord because look at the pride that these people have shown. 
Look at the disdain for the Heavenly Father and his real words that these people have shown. They've, they've proven to you that, like the scriptures say, every man is going to follow their own evil heart here, right? And that's what people have been doing. So much so that when we bring out the scriptures, when we actually bring out the words that are written in his Bible, and we expound on those words, even stuff that, that needs next to no explanation, right? People buck up against it, right? This is um, uh, Sirach 40 and, and 8 and 9. It says, uh, uh, death and bloodshed, sword and calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the floods of the plagues too. These things were created for the wicked, and for their sakes are all these things coming upon the earth. There's a reason why pestilence, disease, right? Now they have turbo cancers, heart attack. Everybody's having cardiomyopathy strokes, blood clotting, if they got the juicy juice, these things are on the rise because these people have walked in at great pride and the, this, this, the, the, the tr coming tribulation, how bad this is going to get, right? All that is created for the wicked and for your sakes. In the old world came the flood. So for the same wicked in this time, it's coming to a fire. Because the scriptures talk about... Uh, Get it. Second Peter three and seven it says, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, right? The the the, the rulerships that are here now, right? The earth and how it goes now, all these things are being kept in store, right? Reserved unto fire. All this stuff, everything you see, the way these people act, the lifestyles that people live here, the business that these people are able to set up, all this stuff is just being reserved for that day of fire, for the day of judgment, right? Like the scriptures say, the day coming that shall burn as an oven, all this stuff is just being reserved unto that day, right? It says, uh, fire against the day of judgment and perdition, right? going into the destruction of ungodly men, All right? So these pestilences, these plagues, these, were, these are being used in order to sit here and, and put these people to the grinder, to the absolute grinder. The Lord is gonna put these people into the meat grinder with oh so many judgments, man. This is uh, Jeremiah 43 and 11. It says, I started uh, five. It says, but Jonathan, the son of uh, Korea and all the captains of the, uh, uh, of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whether they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah even men and women and children and the king's daughter and every person that uh, Nebel, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard had left with the uh, left with uh, Gedaliah, the son of Ahikim, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet and Baruch, the son of uh, Neriah. So they came into the land of Egypt. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. Salakia. Sorry for that, man. Verse 11. Right? It says, And when he cometh, he shall smite the land of Egypt and deliver such as are for for death to the death, and such as for captivity to captivity, and such as for the sword to the sword. Right? And that's what you're seeing is the Lord is, is getting ready to deliver everybody to whatever lot they have. Right? The scriptures talk about whither... 
That might be Jeremiah 15. I think that's why I had that there. Jeremiah 15 and 1, it says, Then said Yahweh unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind couldn't be towards this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. All right? When you look at the way people operate, it's, it, hey, even the righteous of the righteous that pled for the people, right? Because that's what Moses and Samuel did. They, they pled for the people, right? And the Lord heard them over and over again, right? But the Lord's telling you right there, even if they were here at this point, how these people are acting, how it's going. I, man, I saw a video. It's like that the Ice Spice cookie cutter hoes out here are getting record deals. And it's, they're talking like, like fucking teenage niggas, right? And it's just. It's just all ass shaking in the video. None of it is any skill, talent, message. None of it. None of it. And these people are given, being given platforms. The Lord sees these things. Right? And, he, and it's getting to the point where it's like, man, I can't, like the scriptures say, the Lord's eyes are too pure to, then to behold evil. It says, and it shall come to pass, if they say unto thee, whither shall we go? Then shalt thou tell them, Thus say Yahweh, such as for death to death, and such as for the sword to the sword, and such as for the famine to the famine, and such as for the captivity to the captivity. The Lord is just going to start handing out judgment. The message has been out there too long, and these are why plagues are here. Right? Because the message has gone out far enough. The amount of videos that have gone out are well more than enough, right? You have everybody talking, and the Lord is using scoffers. And I was I was meditating on it because they I was I forget which camp I was watching. I don't think it was the 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 which call it camp the the Florida camp. Yeah, and uh, the brothers were speaking. They were out doing their street ministry, and uh, one of the brothers said something about how here it is. You have everybody, or it might have been the Dallas camp. Everybody's talking about the Israelites at this point, right? And all the celebrities, and even more so, the Lord has allowed scoffers to get such a name in this world where everybody just tunes in to watch like Charleston White. And he gives the people the same logic that he has. And they both agree that doing the work of the Lord is not something that they want to do. So like you. But I was saying um, the Lord allowed scoffers like Charleston White to sit here and build up a platform of scoffing even so much so that these people tune into this nigga like he's their prophet. Then he tells them a message that's against the truth, against following the Heavenly Father, against the Israelites, where these people really grabbed onto that message. So everybody's picking a side. And this is why the Lord is saying, such as for death to the death, such as for the famine to the famine, because these people have picked the things that they have an affinity to. And it's not righteousness. It's not righteousness. It's to their flesh. Right? Jeremiah said, Jeremiah, when he was on the earth, said, uh, if I can get it. All right, Jeremiah 18. and 18, it says, I'll start at uh, 15. It says, because my people have forgotten me. They have burned incense to vanity. And they have caused them to stumble at their ways from the ancient paths to walk in the paths and the way 
not cast up. These people have chosen to go in a way that is not even prepared. It's not even a way that you're supposed to walk. If the path is uh, cast up, right, they haven't removed the, the obstacles out of the way. They didn't level the road, right? It's treacherous ground. And these, this is the path that people rather walk on than walk on the straight and narrow with the Lord. It says, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, every one that passeth thereby shall uh, be astonished and wag their head. I will scatter them as with the, an east wind before, their, before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. For the Lord to show you the back and not the face, he, he, he's, turning, he's turning his back on you. That's what's going to happen because these people have chosen the wicked way so uh, fervently, right? There's nothing you can do to get them right. It says, then said, said they, come and let us devise devices against Jeremiah for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor the counsel, uh, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet and this is where we're getting to because the persecution is going to come there's only so much to where somebody can like the scriptures say a servant being uh, uh, someone being often reproved hardened their heart and what did Pharaoh do when he hardened his heart he tried to put afflictions on the righteous well these people are in the same state they pick they, they, these are the same souls that are out here that said uh uh, we have no king but Caesar when Yahweh Shai was there. Right? It says, Come and let us uh, smite him with the tongue and let us not give heed to any of his words. And this is how these people think. So they take their time to sit here and make smear campaigns, paint us up as some evil men, which we're not. Right? It says, Give heed to me. O Yahweh, hearken to the voice of them that contend with me. Shall evil be recompensed for good? For they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them. And that's what the prophets were always here for. But, uh, man, I, I, I've told my woman this many times. Man, I have more uh, joy in, 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 in somebody who repents for their fault than I have for their destruction. Right, but people, there's there's people that aren't going to repent. It's in the scriptures, right? The Book of Revelation talks about even when the the, the plagues of the fire came, these people repented not. It says, verse twenty again, shall evil be recompensed for good, for they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and, the, and be widows and let their men be put to death let their young men be slain by the sword in battle let a cry be heard from their houses when thou hast brought uh, when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them and that's going to happen here in these days for they have digged a pit to take me and hid a snare for my feet Yet, Yahweh, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their own sins from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal thus with them to, uh, to the time, in the time of thine anger. And that's what we're coming to. This is why all these plagues are here. Because the Lord is about to deal with these people in anger, man. There's, hey, going out sick, man, that's a, it's a terrible thing to be taken from health to just existence. That's it. You just know you're here. That's it. It's a, it's a hard thing, man. And these people are going to be put in, through it. Shalom.